What's up guys, Sagi here and welcome to another Tech Year Talk. Today I want to talk about something that gets discussed and sometimes blown out of proportion in the comments section of pretty much every camera video that I do, image stabilization. I want to talk about why your images and video may not look how you want them to, the different types of image stabilization available, and whether or not they're going to help in each case. Before we get to image stabilization, I wanna talk about three reasons why your image or video may not look as sharp or as stable as you would like. Our goal, of course, is to have the subject appear sharp in our images, and we want our video to be stable and sharp. There are three reasons why your subject may not be sharp. The first is inaccurate focus. If a subject is slightly out of focus, it's gonna appear blurry. The second reason why you might get a blurry subject is that your subject is in motion. If you're trying to photograph a person running or a car moving by, and you're using a shutter speed that's too slow to stop the movement of the subject, you're going to get blurry results. And the third reason why your images or video might be blurry is camera shake. And this comes from the natural movement that we introduce to a camera while holding it. So now that we know why our pictures or footage might not look as sharp or as stable as we want, let's look at image stabilization. There are three types of image stabilization, in-lens image stabilization, in-body digital image stabilization, and then in-body sensor shifting image stabilization known as IBIS. Lens or optical image stabilization goes by different names. So Canon calls it IS, Nikon calls it VR or vibration reduction, Sigma uses OS for optical stabilization, Sony calls it OSS for optical steady shot. It doesn't matter what cute, brandable, catchy name they come up with, it's the same concept. I'm not saying they all work equally well, I'm just saying the approach is the same. With lens IS, gyros in the lens, together with an onboard computer, control a group of elements inside the lens. The gyros detect the movement of the lens and then apply a corrective movement to the lens elements to counteract the effect. Now moving on, in-body digital image stabilization is software that's used by the processor to analyze the image or footage. So for photography, it detects motion and attempts to counteract it. For video, it goes from frame to frame and then uses pixels from outside the visible frame as a motion buffer to smooth over any transition from one frame to the next. Now the third type of image stabilization is called IBIS or in-body image stabilization, which shouldn't be confused with in-body digital image stabilization. With IBIS, the sensor of the camera is actually able to move in order to compensate for camera shape. This is a great option because it doesn't rely on the lens having IS, which lets you use less expensive lenses and still get stabilization. It also doesn't rely on digital image stabilization, which crops the image a little bit. All right, so now that we looked at the different reasons why your image or video may not be as sharp and the different types of stabilization we have available, let's talk about whether you actually need it. I'll start out with photography and then I'll move on to video. If the reason why your subject isn't sharp is that it's out of focus, then image stabilization is not gonna help at all because it can't actually bring an out of focus subject into focus. This is something your autofocus system needs to handle. Unless, of course, you're using manual focus, then you need to handle that. But if you are using autofocus, it may have to do with where you place the focus point or which focus mode you selected. For images, make sure that whether you're using the viewfinder or the LCD screen, that your focus point is set on your subject. If you're shooting portraits, make sure that you set it right on their eyes if the subject is facing you or on the closest eye if they're looking off camera. Of course, if your camera offers eye detection, it will do this for you, but it's easy enough to do it yourself. And this is where having more focus points in your viewfinder can be really helpful. The next reason we discussed regarding a blurry subject has to do with the subject moving. The reason why your subject moving is gonna appear blurry is that the sensor is being exposed to the scene while the subject is in motion and it's accurately recording that motion. So if you're taking a picture and you're using a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second, and your subject is running across your frame, they're gonna be blurry. A 60th of a second or 1 100th of a second might sound really fast, but when you look at how much movement is actually happening in your frame during that time, 
it's not fast enough. Again, this isn't something image stabilization is gonna help with, and you need to shorten your shutter speed to the point where it freezes the motion. So for example, if you're shooting at 250th of a second and the subject is still blurry, go to 320, go to 400, 500, 640, 800, until you can freeze the subject in place. And there's no setting that's gonna work for every situation because it depends on several factors like the speed of the subject, the distance between you and the subject, and the direction of the movement. Now we get to the third reason why your images and footage may not look how you want them, which is camera shake. And as a reminder, this refers to the slight movements of the camera when the camera is handheld. This is particularly noticeable in longer focal lengths and in video that's shot handheld. For photography, again, you can take care of some of this movement by using a faster shutter speed. But you may get to a point when you're shooting in low light, you just can't afford to lower your shutter speed, you're at an aperture that's as wide as you can get, and you're also shooting at an ISO that's as high as you're comfortable using. That's where image stabilization can help. So do you need image stabilization for photography? Well, that depends. If you're trying to correct the effects that are caused by improper focus or subject motion, then the answer is no, because image stabilization won't help at all. The rule of thumb used to be that for a static subject, you shouldn't handhold the camera at a shutter speed that's slower than the equivalent focal length of the lens. So if we're talking about 35 millimeter equivalent focal length, a 50 millimeter shouldn't be held at a shutter speed that's slower than 1 50th of a second. Same would be true for 100 millimeters, slower than 1 100th of a second, 200 millimeter with 1 200th of a second, and so on, you get it. But image stabilization can help us here because depending on your camera and lens, you can shoot at shutter speeds that are three, four, or even five times slower. That means shooting still subjects using a 500 millimeter lens at 1 60th of a second. Again, this is for a static subject. We already discussed having to account for moving subjects. So image stabilization can be helpful only if you're already shooting at a proper shutter speed, have a subject that's in focus, and you're only trying to counteract the result of camera shake. And if you're interested, I'm working on another video discussing the advantages and disadvantages of each of the image stabilization options, and I'll put a link to it up in the corner and in the description. Now, before I continue with the video, if you like what you've seen so far, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, go ahead and hit the subscribe and notification buttons and then drop me a comment so I can say hello. Okay, so for video, we're not usually worried about a particular frame being blurry because we're using slower shutter speeds and the movement is continuous, so it's hard to see if the subject is a little blurry. What's much more noticeable is that the entire frame is moving. So you'll see X and Y plane movements, meaning left to right and up and down, and you'll also see tilt, pan, and roll movements. Okay, so the million dollar question is, do you need in-body, digital, or lens-based image stabilization for video, and is it worth the money? It would make sense to say yes, right, because you're getting more stable footage, and without question, you are. Even if you're just standing still holding a camera and you turn IS on, whether it's in lens, digital, or IBIS, you will see a difference. What I wanna warn you about are your expectations. If you're expecting to turn it on and then walk around and get buttery smooth footage, then that's just not going to happen. When my goal is super smooth footage, then I'll use a slider or a gimbal 100% of the time. No in-lens digital or IBIS that I've seen can get me those results with a DSLR mirrorless or cinema camera. Some of the action cams on the markets do an amazing job at stabilization, but that's another story altogether. Don't get me wrong, your footage will be more stable with camera or lens-based IS, but only within reason. One of the only times when I shoot handheld is if I want that handheld look. And in this case, it's awesome to have image stabilization because even though I want the handheld look, I still want it to be smoother than true handheld, which is pretty unwatchable in my opinion. Another scenario where I feel comfortable shooting handheld is if I'm only going to have slight camera movement and I'm shooting at 120 frames per second. In this case, I know that when I slow that footage down to 24 or 30 frames per second in post, it's gonna appear much more stable and I can always use warp stabilizer to make it even better. I wanna mention that there are times when you should 
100% not use image stabilization for both photography and video. And I'm finishing up another video about that topic. So if you don't see a link up in the corner and in the description, hit the subscribe and notification buttons to be notified when it's published. All right, so now that I told you what I think, I wanna know what you think. Did this discussion about image stabilization make sense and was it useful? Are there other aspects you want me to cover or more specific questions that I didn't include? I really hope that this video about whether you need image stabilization or not was helpful. If it was, please let me know by leaving a comment, giving this video a thumbs up, and if you haven't yet, join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification buttons. For more tips, tutorials, and reviews, you can always find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.